What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 18th of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today, and some that did poorly, hint, hint. Facebook stock. We're going to be getting into Facebook stock as well in this video, doing a technical breakdown and talking about briefly what is going on with this company that is bringing down the stock price. So stay tuned for that later on in this video. But before we do get into the topics of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the market updates, the trading updates, the technical breakdowns, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really does support me and supports the channel in general. And if you're not already a part of our two communities down below in the description box, the Discord and the Facebook, Facebook, both 100% free. Get into those right now, guys. I 100% guarantee you, you'll find very valuable information there, especially if you're a beginner trader and investor. There's a bunch of people in there that are super active and they are willing to help you with any questions that you have, of course, including myself. So without further ado, guys, let's talk about what went down today on the 18th of March in 2019 in the overall stock market here, starting off with the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. We ended up closing off the day here two minutes ago, up about $10.52 up about 0.37%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average today, guys, ended up closing up $65 in the green, up 25.25% uh, here. And the NASDAQ Composite, guys, up about $14 at the day, at the close of the day, up about 0.2% on the day. So, we ended up closing off the day green today, guys, but it wasn't an astronomical green day, right? Just like I expected, you know, we had a little bit of a green day today, but it wasn't a huge, huge green day. And why is this, guys? Well, we are at the higher points here of the uptrend pattern that the SPX is on, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, meaning that we are getting more overbought on these indices, especially the SPX here, and we could be, you know, in tune here, we could be getting ready for a little pullback. If you guys recalled in my previous video, I talked about how I could see another day or two of green in the overall markets before we do experience a little, a little bit of a retracement, right? Because we notice here over the past couple of months in the SPX, really the past couple of weeks since the beginning of 2019, well, I guess you can say months now because it has been about two and a half months you know every time we pumped up to a higher high every time that we got a bit overbought here in the RSI level the relative strength index we saw a retracement between you know one percent to 3%, which was our most recent pullback when we pulled back from about 28.20 all the way down to about 27.26. That was about a 3% pullback in notice. That was at a new high here. So we aren't really seeing a flatlining pattern here, which really means that we could be pushing up again tomorrow. But once we do start to see a flatlining pattern, meaning we're seeing either a double top or a strong resistance at a new level, you know, that could be an indication that we're going to be pulling back the next day, right? Take a look at this day, remember, or these couple of days here. Remember I called this double top out in the videos a couple of weeks back at about 28.15, the strong resistance level. This was a flat line, and then what do you see? We ended up dumping, we ended up selling off 3% over the next couple of days. So that's what I would be keeping an eye out here for in terms of the SPX, guys. You know, right now, like I said, we're not consolidating quite yet for that potential pullback. We are still running up. So let's say we consolidate tomorrow here. 
We do something like this, let's say hypothetically here, you know, we consolidate for a day, we consolidate for another day or something like that. We have a, two straight flat days, one flat day, whatever, you know, maybe at that point we could start to experience a little pullback here, you know, maybe a 2% retracement, maybe a 3% little pullback that could potentially happen. But as of right now, guys, we really did something super, super important here on a technical basis. We ended up breaking out of this resistance from back in the beginning of November in 2018 and actually the beginning of October or really the middle of October in 2018 at about 2820. Well, we did break out of that yesterday, I believe, or or on Friday, but today we ended up holding those levels again and we ended up pushing higher. So this is a very good sign that we're now trading in this next channel between 2815, 2820 as the new support level and the new resistance level at about 2870. So as of now, the next target on the SPX, if we continue to push up here, if we continue to go green, which there is a possibility, the target is at about 2870, which from the levels we are now, is about a 1.3, 1.4% move away, you know, uh, to the upside here, right? So let's say we moved 1% tomorrow. We're going to be very close to these levels up here at about 2870. And if we're taking a look here on a closer term basis, you know, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, you know, on this closer term basis. We ended up breaking out of this uh, resistance, and now it's looking like we're holding it as a new support, especially since we pulled back on Friday, tested that level, and opened up higher today. That's a very good sign that we're continuing to push up. And we actually tested the level again today. If we look on the one day, one minute here on the SPX, we actually had a double top intraday here, which means we could be pushing down. We got the double top. We pushed down, right, all the way to 28.22, and we retested that level, that resistance, or, you know, the old resistance, which is now a new support, and we ended up closing the day on a little upswing. So that's a very good sign that we're holding this level as a new support, and we're continuing to push up. So in terms of tomorrow, guys, what I'm going to be waiting for is... Are we going to continue to push up? Are we going to continue to hold these levels as new support levels? And are we going to continue to climb up? Are we going to flatline? You know, are we going to see a day or two of consolidation here? Which could mean we're A, either going to push up to a new level or B, we're going to end up dumping and seeing that retracement, maybe a 1%, 2%, 3% pullback. Or let's say tomorrow, guys, we end up selling off are we going to end up breaking this level at about 28.20, which again is a new support? And are we going to end up breaking below it, which in that case, would it would be acting as a resistance again? So there are a couple of scenarios here that could end up playing out. And uh, really, I'm just going to be looking at what the futures are doing, what the large caps are doing pre-market hours to really understand where we could potentially be headed for tomorrow and for the rest of this week, guys. So that's what the SPX is looking like right here. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, we finally ended up breaking that level. I believe we did break this level on Friday of about 25,800. This was a level of resistance from back in the middle of October and back in the beginning of December, we topped off both at those times, at those levels, and we sold off, making that a new resistance level. So let me quickly take a look. Did we actually break that on Friday? Yeah, we did. We ended up breaking that level on Friday. We popped up to 25,900. We retested it today, which is a very good sign that this is a new support level. We're retesting that support like we did uh, you know, we actually tested it the first time on Friday when we closed above it. And the fact that we ended up opening above it as well and then continuing to push up in the latter half of the market, that's a good sign that this is a new support level for the Dow Jones. So what am I going to be looking for now in the Dow Jones, guys? Very simple. We broke the resistance. It's now a new support at about $25,900-ish. And the next level I'm going to be looking for now, if we continue to push up, is going to be at around $26,200, where we can clearly see 
On this chart here on the 184 hour, we can see we topped off there back in the beginning of November at about 26,200. And we topped off there a couple of weeks ago back towards the end of February in 2018 at about 26,200. We saw that little 3% pullback here, roughly 3, 4% pullback. It's a little bit more than the SPX because Boeing weighed down this overall index. And now, guys, we're curling back up. We're breaking out of the resistances. We're trending above the 50 simple moving, uh, simple moving average here, as well as the EMA. So, you know, this is the level I'm going to be waiting for. And just like the SPX, there's a couple of different scenarios that can play out here. Are we, A, going to continue to push up here to fill the gap to the upside? That's a scenario. B, are we going to consolidate here for a couple of days before we push back up or before we sell off below this support to make it a new resistance? Because if we sell off, break the support, it's obviously a new resistance. Or... Are we going to sell off tomorrow and break that level and slowly start to trend down? Which at this point, guys, the way the technicals are looking, I think we're probably going to have another green day tomorrow, maybe on Wednesday again before we do see a potential pullback in the overall markets. Those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comments section. But that's what the Dow Jones is looking like. Nothing too crazy. So the NASDAQ here today, guys, had about, like we saw in the beginning of the video, about a 2.2% uh, move to the upside. And this is the future, which is why it's continuing to push up here uh, you know, after market hours. And we all know the NASDAQ has been breaking resistances left and right over these past couple of trading days. Remember, we bounced on the 180 SMA here, confirming it as a support level. We then bounced above the 50 simple moving average. We bounced above the $7,100 resistance. We broke above the $7,200 resistance. We consolidated here at about $7,300 for a day or two. We made another higher high. And now we're trending at this resistance. We're trending right below it. The one at about $7,375 to $70 ish dollars, right where we are right now. When we filled this channel from 72 up up to uh, about 73 75 very quickly it took literally let's see about a week for us to get from here to here and now guys you know it's a, it's a pretty interesting spot for the nasdaq are we going to continue to push up to then retest uh you know break out of that resistance and test the next spot which in this case would be at around 7400 or are we going to see a little bit of a retracement here to test the support level at about $7,200? You know, in my personal opinion, guys, in terms of the three major indices here, I think the NASDAQ is the most overbought out of every single one because we saw the Dow. It's still not at that higher high level in terms of the past couple of weeks. Let me just show you guys again. We're still... At this level, right, we're still not past the previous high. And the SPX, although it is at a high right now, it's still pretty close to those previous high levels that we saw a couple of weeks ago, literally like 0.5% like away or something like that, 0.7%. It's really not too close at all, uh, or rather it is really close, but the NASDAQ, you know, from the previous high, you know, it's up around 2 maybe close to 3%. From that high, and it does seem a bit overbought here, so, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if this one actually did end up pulling back over the next day, maybe two days, especially if we do end up pushing green, guys, for, you know, for, you know a day or two here up till Wednesday, maybe if we end up doing that, you know, I do expect this one to see a pretty hard pullback, you know, probably down to about $7,250, maybe $7,300 flat, just for it to pull back a bit, because because guys, remember, you know, when a stock ETF index future, when it's pushing up nonstop with no really red candlesticks or retracements in sight, although there is one here, two here, you know, there is going to be a pullback sooner or later. It's going to happen. And at this point, you know, I do see it coming 
over these next couple of days, especially for the NASDAQ composite. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the overall markets right now, guys. Let me know down below what is your opinion on what is going on right now in the markets. Are we going to be pushing up green a couple of more days? Are we going to have one day of green and then we're going to pull back? Let me know what you guys think. I would love to know. So what did I end up trading today, guys? I traded UWT. UWT has been my go-to ETF here over the past couple of trading days. And we all know by now, UWT is a crude oil-based ETF, meaning whenever crude oil is going up in price, UWT is going up in price. It's an inverse leveraged ETF that trades on crude oil. That's all you have to know really to be able to trade this. And of course, you have to watch crude oil as well to see the price action, the price movement to determine when to buy and when to sell UWT. So let's take a look at crude oil very quickly. We all know crude oil broke out or rather most of us know for all you new viewers out there, unless you did this analysis on your own, um, you probably probably don't know that we broke out of the resistance level at about 5775 which gave us a confirmation that we're heading up or we're, we're potentially heading up to the next level, which in this case is $61, and everything is still intact right now, as of right now, that we are still going to be heading up to $60 to $61 here on a technical basis. And that's exactly you know what ended up happening, right? We broke that resistance level a couple of days ago. I ended up trading UWT a couple of times within you know, this time period that we've been up above 57.75 and on the new support at about $58. And now guys, we saw today, we actually ended up bumping up into the $59 range from this morning. We can see we were at 58.45 at about 5.45 a.m. with about three and a half hours left to market open on Eastern Standard Time. And then we ended up opening up the market at about 58.85. And this is when UWT ended up taking off like a rocket, right? We can see here crude oil, once we saw this little pullback from about $59 flat, all the way down to about 58.77. And once we started to pop up aggressively, this gave me pretty much within the 30 minutes of market open the confirmation that we were continuing to push up. This was a higher low. We noticed the double bottom here, which is a good sign that we're heading back up. There's more bullish potential when we see a double bottom and an aggressive move to the upside like this. And this is what ended up queuing me to hop in to UWT this morning. You know, I got in, I believe, at about 10 o'clock flat once crude oil really made that huge move. And then as we broke out of the 59 level, or rather into the 59 level from this previous resistance, you know, that that really made me put even more money into the position. And let's just take a look at UWT very quickly so we can see exactly what I'm seeing here. So we notice the double bottom here in UWT as crude oil, you know, double bottomed as well. And then we notice this aggressive pop. And this is when I ended up building my position at about 1704, added more money as we broke that resistance on crude oil, which really correlates the same here to UWT when we broke that 17. 15 level, right? We notice on crude oil, like I said, we broke above the $59 uh, dollar resistance level, the intraday resistance. And then from there, we popped up even further, popping us above the UWT resistance at about 1714. And I ended up adding more money roughly around here on this little pullback. And I wrote it up pretty much up to about 1745, taking, I think my average cost was like 1710. And I took, you know, for all you guys that don't know, I'm typically taking about one to 2% on my day trades. This one actually played out pretty well. Ended up taking about a 1.6, 1.7% profit on my money here in my UWT trade, sold out there because at this point, guys, think about it. We're overbought. We're already pushed up past the resistance from pre-market. We're at higher, we're at pretty much the high levels over the past, you know, 90 days in terms of crude oil or uh, UWT rather. Well, not really 90 days. You know, on the 30-day chart, we're at an all-time high here in terms of the past 30 days. So Took my profits to play it safe there. And this is actually one that I'm going to be watching very closely over these next couple of weeks to see if crude oil does end up getting 
to that 60 to $61 level. If it does, UWT does have a chance to get up to into the 19 levels. If I can do, um, you know, if I can predict it, if I can just give a price target there, I think it definitely could get to 19, maybe even $20. If we do get up, you know, another one, two, three dollars in terms of crude oil. So let's talk about um, Facebook stock very quickly. And I do have a note here you know, on Facebook stock on my phone, we saw Needham and company today downgraded the stock actually from a buy to a hold. So there's been a bunch of different, you know, news uh, out on Facebook stock. They've been in the news a lot recently, guys, a lot of negative things around Facebook. And we can clearly see, you know, the stock has taken a hit, guys, it's taken a hit from the 170 level a couple of days ago, you know, we thought, I personally thought that we were going to advance to the next resistance, which from this point in time, 171, it was looking like it was a new support. I thought we were going to pop up here to 178, right? That clearly didn't happen. We saw some executives leave, the co-founders of Instagram left, some other executives, I believe it was the chief product officer, one of the executive in WhatsApp left, a bunch of executives executives left the company. This was a very bad sign, very bad news, especially to investors' eyes out there. We also saw the live streaming of the New Zealand massacre on Facebook. That pretty much spread like wildfire. That was in the news. That caused a lot of public controversy surrounding the company, right? There's privacy regulations right now. That remains a concern for the company. There's just a bunch of different things out there, guys. Privacy has been a very big thing for Facebook. Obviously, there's a lot of data out there, a lot of public users, a lot of data on these public users that can be used by tech companies to advertise. Maybe they can use that to false advertise some things. You know, there's just a bunch of of different things really that's just shining a negative light right now on Facebook stock. So I personally think, you know, since analysts downgraded the stock, right, the whole massacre thing being live streamed there, you know, the privacy regulations, potentially the government coming in, you know, I read an article that was saying the government wants to work with Facebook, right, to set a regulation or something like that. You know, these are things that could hurt the stock price, guys. So right now on a technical level, we can see we're at $160 per share, which is a support stemming back from September of 2018. If we do end up breaking this level, guys, that's not going to be too good on a technical basis. And I honestly think we will break this level and we will start to head back into the $150 level, $150, maybe $155 level. And potentially if we do end up selling off even heavier, you know, this might be a little bit out of, uh, you know, out of, uh, what's the word here, guys, you know, out of uh, the realm here that might be a little bit out of, uh, or out of proportion, you know what I mean, if we do end up selling the 150, you know, that could potentially happen. And that would put, you know, Facebook stock down an extra five, 6% from where it is right now. And on a technical basis, you know, 155 to 150 is the next support, you know, in terms of uh, Facebook stock. So what do you guys think about this? You know, a lot of the privacy concerns, regulations, data leaks, you know, the massacre, you know, being live streamed, you know, these executives leaving, just a lot of negative light right now around Facebook stock, you know, it got downgraded to a hold, you know, I'm personally a Facebook investor. You know, it's one of my bigger positions. It's one of my growth positions here in my uh, in my stock market portfolio. I'm not too worried about this, right? I think it's going to blow over here in the next couple of months. You know, regulation probably will, uh, you know, I think it most likely will hurt the stock and the company in general. So let's see what's going to happen regarding that, guys. Only time will tell. And, uh, you know, if we do get back down here into the 130s, 140s, you know, that's probably a spot where I'm going to be buying some more Facebook stock. But until then, you know, I'm simply holding on to my shares. I'm holding on to my shares here, um, you know, pretty happily. 
And uh, that's just what I'm doing, guys. So Facebook stock, that's what it's looking like here. So let's talk about a couple of other stocks that did very well today and that I see potential in here over the next couple of weeks. So first, let's just talk about Facebook since it's already on here very quickly. So if we do end up holding this level at about 160, I do see some potential upside up to about 165 to 170, which is roughly the next resistance on Facebook. But again, if we break this level, I'm probably not going to be looking to play it. Maybe a put option, maybe short. I don't really short stocks, but that could be a potential short play for you know others out there. And uh, that's what I'm looking at in terms of Facebook stocks. So another one, Walmart, is actually one that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. That's actually looking very, very solid right now. So we noticed Walmart, WMT, it popped up above the, uh, it actually bounced on the 180 SMA here. It popped above the 50 SMA and the EMA. And now it's looking to test this resistance at about $99 to $100, where I actually have my alert that has yet to be triggered from a couple of weeks ago when I actually set it. So if we do end up popping 100 guys, breaking 100, you know, Walmart's definitely going to be one I'm looking to swing trade from about 100, potentially up to about 105. That does offer, I believe, like a 4%, 5% margin of profit here on Walmart looking pretty pretty solid here so another one is why why this one did very very well today and it has been over the past couple of days here guys we noticed it broke the $80 resistance we were trading in this channel a couple of weeks ago. We talked about that. We covered it in a couple of weeks ago uh, in the videos a couple of weeks ago. And since then, guys, we popped up above $80, held it as a new support, and now we're clearly climbing up, you know, really testing that resistance now at about 85 to $86. So am I going to put money into YY right now? Probably not, guys, because we are a bit overbought. The RSI is pointing at about 73 right now. We're at a resistance. So ultimately, I would like to see a pullback and a retest either at about $82 at this level. Let me show you guys with the uh, trend line here. Or maybe $80, right? So between $80, $82, this level, I think, YY is a good buy. And from there, you know, we can ride it back up to $87 or $86 where it's currently at right now. And then if we break that level, you know, the next resistance is going to be at about 87 to 88 dollars. So why why I'm watching that one pretty closely right now, guys, for a pullback and a better entry point. ACB Aurora Cannabis is another one that I'm watching today. It had a good move today, up about 33 cents, up about 3.4 percent. But just like why why guys, I want to see a little bit of a pullback here in terms of ACB, get closer down to about maybe 930. 940, maybe 950, bring that RSI down a little bit so we can, you know, get closer to the support, get a better entry point, and then ride it back up as it confirms the reversal uptrend to the previous resistances, which in this case is at around $10 uh, per share here, which I think it did end up hitting today, guys. Let me double check. 1014, yup, it ended up doing that. We pulled back, you know, this would have been a good entry point in my opinion, but I, I personally missed it. So I want to see another potential pullback to this level to get an entry point for the ride back up to about $10. And if we break $10, guys, you know, this one could be hitting $12 and potentially, you know, even higher, uh, you know, all time highs if we do continue to push up from there. So ACB, that's what I'm looking at in terms of that one. Tesla, Tesla's one that a lot of people wanted me to talk about. And Tesla, guys, has been getting hammered. And we finally got the confirmation a couple of days ago that this one is continuing its downtrend, guys. It's continuing its downtrend pretty much trading within this little wedge pattern that I have here, as well as, you know, getting rejected by the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA, both acting as resistance levels over the past couple of months here in terms of Tesla stock. So where we are right now, it could potentially be a bounce point from about 265 to 270 ish up to about maybe 285 290 again which would put it at that 180 SMA resistance notice we're also at you know pretty oversold here in terms of the stock i do see potential if we hold this support level drawn out by this trend line i see potential that we can pop up even further here guys if we do get 
back into the 270s, mid 270s, and into the 280s. I think that could be a potential trade here in terms of uh, Tesla stock. So those are just a couple of stocks I'm watching for tomorrow, guys. Tesla for the potential bounce back. Walmart, I think Walmart's looking pretty, pretty solid right now, especially if we break $100. You know, UWT, that's definitely the number one on my list. Crude oil, UWT, they've been on absolute fire. Facebook, guys, what are we going to do? Are we going to break that 160 level? Are we going to slowly start to push up from 160? That could be a potential put or a call play, or you can buy shares if we do end up hitting 160 or maintaining 160, rather, and slowly starting to push back up. But with the news surrounding Facebook right now, you know, the downgrade from a buy to a hold, you know, this could potentially go further to the downside. We just have to see what is going on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, drop a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.